you know, to, you know, that's, that's something that would be awesome to do now. And, you know, just half, you know, just to half my buy price and, you know, my RT investing stats would look a lot better a lot sooner. But that's not the idea of the portfolio. So I honestly don't care uh, that much if, you know, the, the portfolio stat, stats doesn't look so good now. Um, so the idea is to have a good blueprint for myself, for my family, my friends and you guys that are copying me to, you know, dollar cost average into, and then over time have the best possible return on your money. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking my video. Thanks for deciding to watch. Uh, welcome. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Rian and today I want to talk about two things. I want to give an update about the um, dividend growth ETF battle, the challenge that I have going, the one year challenge. And then also <clears throat> I want to, you know, just give a general update on the RT investing uh, copy portfolio. Um, so I'm going to be adding timestamps down in the description. So if you want to, you know, only see the update on the portfolio, you can skip and then also, you know, vice versa. Um, yeah, I've been crazy busy the past two weeks or so. So sorry for not making a video. Uh, I am getting to it today. So let's get right into it. I'm going to hide my camera. All right. So you, we can see, um, that there has been no additional dividend payouts on any one of the 10. Uh, the ARC is not supposed to be here. It's a recent trade that I opened up. I tried to catch the bottom. I think I did pretty well. Uh, it's up and 10 or 9.4% already, so not too bad. But yeah, so you can see only the SPHD. And now we had an additional, uh, additional or another company inside an ETF that paid a dividend. And then also the um, dividend growth copy portfolio from eToro also has a uh, you know added dividend there overall you know you can see that uh, the the growth orientated ones you know they they still had or even have some more drawdown um, currently you can see that the ones that have you know more value based companies they are the ones doing well and still we can see the asia one and you know, also doing pretty well um, and then you can see here SPYD, the high dividend from uh, SPDR, is also doing quite well. But yeah, not not much happening on the dividend portfolio. Okay, I'm just going to put on my camera again. So most companies, you know, pay dividends. You know, they they pay dividends quarterly most of the time. So. You know, it can be monthly. It can be it, it can be any any time a company actually wants to do it monthly or quarterly or yearly, but most companies do pay quarterly um, dividends. So I see that, or I expect a lot of companies to pay around you know mid March or uh, you know. So how it works is there's a, a dividend effective date. So you have to be you know you have to own that stock you know or that ETF at a certain date. So usually or, or most of these. Uh, companies, the dividend, the effective date is the end of February. So, you know, just with by us holding these ETFs now, you know, or yesterday, as of yesterday, it means that we are eligible for the dividend that will get paid mid-March or somewhere in March. So on the next update of this battle, you know, we should see, you know, a lot more uh, dividend payouts. And also, you know, it, it will be a little bit more exciting than it currently is. But yeah, let's look at the Excel. Just gonna put off my camera again. Uh, so if we look at the Excel, you can see I'm gonna try to zoom it a little bit. Um, so this is the current the current state of you know its performance. You can see that we are down 21% on our principal investment for the year so far. Now this has largely to do with the, you know, just the chaos in the stock market and everything that's going on in Ukraine, in Russia, the whole situation there, a lot of uncertainty in the markets, but, you know, it is what it is. And I actually wish I could dollar cost average <laughs> into these positions on my uh, eToro. I wish I could, you know, just add some more dollars to these, but that will, uh, you know, just defy the purpose of this experiment. So I am going to leave it as is. So on the $5,000, we are down 21%. All right, looking at the actual dividends, you can see that you know la last month the SPHD had a $1. Now we have an additional you know one, $1.58, and we have a total of $2.66. And then also the dividend growth portfolio 
you know, had another 74 cents. So in total, I have made $3.56 in, 56 cents in dividend income from these, or from this 10, uh, or nine dividend ETFs. Is it nine? One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten. The ten dividend ETFs and as well as the dividend growth copy portfolio. All right, so now I'm going to log into my RT Investing account. Now, this is my uh, popular investor account. This is the account that I have, you know, made to be copied, that I've structured. So if you are interested in copying this uh, portfolio, you can find the um, sign-up link in the description below. And then also just go on to eToro and just search for RT-Investing, and you will find me. Click on Copy. And, um, yeah, so let's get into it. Let's look at what is going on in the markets. Okay, so this is the RT investing portfolio. So let's look at the markets. We can see that pre-market features for today is already going strong, uh, which is good. So this would be then the fourth day of gains on the um, American markets, which is good. Seems like you know they are not too concerned about the most recent um, threats from or nuclear threats from from um, the Russian president. So, yeah, I really honestly hope that that doesn't escalate. It just makes me so sad. And actually, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just awful what is happening there. But nevertheless, let's look at the price of gold, also a little bit down. Um, and then, you know, we see some strong gains on the growth companies, you know, coming back up. All right, let's look at the portfolio. So we are still in the red on VTI VOO. I have... I just want to put on my camera for this. So I am going to be depositing money into the RT Invest portfolio. So if you are a copier of this portfolio, you know, you are going to get a notification. When you do get this notification, uh, you, you are not required to add those funds because I am planning on buying into VTI VOO. Um, so initially I said I want to buy in if the price of VTI drops below 205. But, you know, we have seen a rally since. But I am, um, you know, even though I hope that the tensions do not escalate uh, in, in Russia and in Ukraine, you know, it's very likely that or it is just as probable that it would. And in that case, we will see another serious downturn in the markets. And, you know, for that reason, I do want to have cash on hand to be ready to buy in when we see, you know, even further lows. Now, like I said, I'm not saying the markets is, are going down. I'm just saying I want to be prepared for the event that they do. And also, it's nice to just have some cash on hand, you know, if there are any good opportunities that comes along. So if you do get that notification, uh, you know, you can add those funds. But also, like I said, I'm planning into buying into the same existing assets that we have. So by not adding funds, you know, you won't, you know, miss any exposure. Uh, or to any you know, miss exposure to any asset class or any other thing, it would be you know just buying the same things that we have in the portfolio already. I'm just trying to get the RT investing portfolios uh, buying price lower. But if you keep on dollar cost averaging, if you you know just stay consistent with your monthly or weekly contributions, you know then this really doesn't matter. Uh, you know you just be stay keep on being consistent. Um, by adding funds and always remember to keep that copy open trades checkbox selected all right so with that said we can see that you know we're still in the red qqq nasdaq we're also still in the red and not not by much though so even though you know the nasdaq fell significantly more than the s p 500 we have seen quite a recovery uh, let's look at the one day chart uh, let's change the candles 2,000 years later. Bounce uh, that we've seen. Um, I just realized now that, <laughs> that I didn't stop my camera. So you guys didn't see anything that I did. did. So I'm just going to do it again <laughs> quickly. Um, all right. So I just showed the QQQ. And I look at, looked at the graph. And you can see, if you look at the graph, you know, that we had... You know, we are currently at 347, you know, down from an all-time high of around 407, 408. And, yeah, like I said, my overall buying price, 
Let me just quickly show you that. My overall buying price is 357, where the current is 346, so I'm not too far off. So you can see that's why you know I have only a drawdown of minus 2.87%. And like I said, you you might even be in the green if you kept on dollar cost averaging. Now you can see the European market still down quite significantly. Um, VIG growth, um, or not growth, this is dividends, and then growth. You know, all of the American markets, you know, all of the American ETFs are down quite significantly, which is understandable. Also, emerging markets quite down significantly. World markets quite down significantly. Crypto has seen um, uh, a very, very strong rally. You know, this is actually very bullish for, for crypto, especially seeing Bitcoin. Uh, if we can break, so I have like a, um, you know, like we, this is the previous resistance that we had around 45. That was back in, what's that, uh, February? Yeah, 11th of February, we were seeing this, um, you know, these levels, 45, and we got rejected from these levels. So I think, you know, if we can get past this 45, five-ish level, you know, I'll be very, you know, I'll, well, I am always bullish on Bitcoin <laughs> long term, but uh, for this for this time round, you know, it might be a good thing. Um, something very interesting, I saw that, um, you know, the Ukrainian government has put out some uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum addresses where, you know, you can make donations to, you know, to the government to help them fund this war. Uh, or I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, uh, WHR. Uh, I've beeped <laughs> the war. Oh, again. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they have, um, you know, given you the option to support them. So you can go onto Twitter, uh, look for the Ukrainian government, and then see how you can support them. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, I think that's a very bullish thing or a very, you know, uh, honorable thing for for Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is often associated with with bad press and you know like. Uh, hacking and just like laundering and like not not like things that are generally bad so you know this this uh, this option you know for sending money so easily you know into into that country you know without the red tape of of, of international payments or the slowness of, of all of that you know it's just amazing that cryptocurrencies can just step up to to the to the game you know and actively contribute to to this horrible situation that is going on in Ukraine. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, there was actually a guy that said, uh, he, he, if, if they can make a, a Polkadot uh, address available, he'll donate $5 million. But uh, yeah, uh, I think like, you know, you don't wanna look any kind of um, giving, you know, you don't wanna like uh, this, or like uh, I do sense that there was a little bit of marketing <laughs> involved in that. But uh, yeah, let's see. I don't know if the the government, you know, did make a polka dot address available, but it's just cool to see that governments are actually uh, or actively participating and using cryptocurrency as a way to, you know, just get business done. All right, let's look at the rest of the portfolio. Um, so that's it for crypto. Now, obviously, Ethereum would follow the same speed. Um, then we have GDX, which is our gold miner gold uh, um, mining companies uh, so this has increased quite a lot uh, it's had some especially with the war uh, now coming out so you can see that we've had since the the um, chaos broke out we've seen some some substantial gains in in you know the value of these companies the gold miners etf um, you know and this is also closely correlated to um, you know gold gold itself now the reason why you know i hold the reason why I hold gold or, or the GDX instead of gold is because you do actually get some dividends. Now, if I look at this, I'll hide my camera now. We've received two dollars and forty-nine cents of dividends so far. You know, in in this half a year that I've had the position, and you know, so when when you when you hold gold, physically gold on Etoro, you pay pay overnight or weekend fees. But then there's an ETF which is the IAU. And you know that just gives you nothing. It's just it's just a hedge. So I like to use the GDX as the hedge because then at least you know your money, you know you get dividends because you are investing into those companies via this ETF. 
um, and you know they 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 share prices are closely correlated to the price of gold. If gold goes up, you know the value of those companies increases. Same with like Coinbase, you know with crypto. If Bitcoin goes up, the price of Coinbase goes up, and vice versa. So that's the reason why we have GDX. Now I don't want to make this video too long. I see that it's already a little bit too long. So what I'm going to do is um, I will not explain you know each ETF <laughs> going down. You know I have a breakdown video earlier on my channel. I uh, I know that a new one is due, and I do want to make a new one because the layout has changed quite a lot. Um, but yeah, let's quickly go through them. We can see tan, the green energy, still down quite a lot. Uh, VNQ real estate down. Uh, the carbon credits down. Uh, Facebook and Meta both growth. They have been hit substantially now. Again, you know, I would use this opportunity, you know, to to buy into uh, these two companies. But I don't want to mess up the structure of the RT investing portfolio. So you know, I will resist the temptation to dollar cost average into them. You can see that my, you know, exposure is exactly correlated. So specifically, you know, 1.21 percent is allocated to Facebook and Tesla. And you know, so I don't want to dollar cost average on the portfolio itself into these um, two stocks because then it will up the exposure, and I don't want more exposure to these companies. You know, if you take the whole portfolio uh, into consideration, so that is why I cannot stress it enough that you should keep on dollar cost averaging, you know, as much as you can because that's the only way that you will get your buying price for let's say this Facebook and Tesla and you know, as low as possible because you know you would be opening all the trades that you, we, that we have in the portfolio every time and then in effect get your buying price um, as low as possible all right so let's quickly look at the rest of the portfolio you can see that you know obviously the energy and the oil sector is doing extremely now well extremely <laughs> well now um, so you know and this is obviously to do with what is going on in Europe um, so obviously, if we look at the chart uh, of the energy sector, you can see that you know we have seen a substantial increase in the energy companies, and then also the value of those, and then also the same with oil. It's no, it's no uh, secret that the price of oil has shot to the moon uh, recently. Um, let's see, not lost two years. Let's look at the last year. Oh no, sorry, this is my own. I, sorry guys, let me just do this, XOP, if we look at the chart, you can see that if we look at a weekly chart, uh, you can see that, you know, we have seen some new highs on uh, the XOP, um, yeah, it's, it's still, it still has a long way to go if you compare it to earlier. <laughs> 2014 so there's still a lot of growth potential but anyway so those two are doing well and then also we have the um, Asian the same one that we have in the dividend uh, the dividend battle of the dividend ETFs um, you know challenge the Asian one so that is also doing quite well and then also we have our um, metaverse crypto exposure quite small positions all in these but they're all down substantially again i'm so tempted to you know just offset this you know like pushing another 125 and all of these and just halving in effect halving you know the the, the drawdown that we have here um, but i will not do it um, because like i said i don't want to offset the percentages this is a blueprint portfolio uh, this is a a portfolio that is designed you know to be dollar cost average into so you know i'm not too phased about the actual performance of rt investing although it's counterproductive because people tend to look at you know how the portfolio is doing but um you know or even as or it might even reflect my skill level but you know which is which is true um but i don't have enough money like i don't have another twelve thousand three hundred dollars now you know to basically you know, buy into all of these markets, you know, at the same time, you know, with the same um, position values, you know, to, you know, that's that's something that would be awesome to do now. And, you know, just half, you know, just to half my buy price and, you know, my RT investing stats would look a lot better a lot sooner. But that's not the idea of the portfolio. So I honestly don't care uh, that much if, you know, the, the portfolio stat 
stats doesn't look so good now. Um, so the idea is to have a good blueprint for myself, for my family, my friends, and you guys that are copying me to you know dollar cost average into, and then over time have the best possible return on your money. All right, guys, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, if you are new here, please consider subscribing. Um, you know, I, I try to make videos as often as I can. Uh, I make update videos. I'm a popular investor on eToro. And if you want to copy me, link in the description as well. Until next time, see you. Cheers. Bye-bye.